boy, it's the roller that's been buffed like 17 times and almost no one uses it. That's always a good sign, right? If you check out the roller power rankings chart, you got the carbon that's fast but weak, the splat roller that's intermediate, and the dynamo that's slow but powerful. Each one has strengths and weaknesses. The Flingza roller tries to Goldilocks its way in by occupying two spots on the chart at once. So, do you want to use a versatile roller that has the speed of the carbon and the range of the dynamo? Well, too bad, keep looking, because the Flingza roller is supposed to be that, but is not that. You see, every roller has two swings in Splatoon 2. The Uno, which is the horizontal swing from the first game, and the Dos, the new vertical swing introduced in Splatoon 2. The Flingza's Uno is slightly faster and slightly shorter range than the Splat Roller's Uno flick. But the Flingza's hitbox and ink spread is also more inconsistent than that of the Splat Roller, which was already pretty inconsistent. However, the Dose swing for the Flingza is really bad! It's slightly faster than the Dynamo's fling, but with way less power. The Dynamo may be slow as shit, but at least it has the power to back it up. The Flings' dose swing is so hard to aim and so easy to dodge, and even if you do get a hit with it, the dose is often a 2 or 3 hit kill. I feel like the Flingza is trying to cover too many bases at once. It wants to be both fast kill time and long range, but is doing too many half measures. It goes for versatility, but ends up with inconsistency. It's like fast food. Sometimes it's great, and sometimes it's so bad it makes you shit your pants. Never half ass two things. Whole ass one thing. If you want to overcompensate, go with the dynamo. If you want to play a decent roller, play the splat roller. If you want to press every button on the controller at once, use the carbon. If you want to be frustrated when your roller messes up easy kills, then take the flingza for a spin. Alright, alright, alright. Let me get this straight. So this is a weapon that uses melee attacks, it has multiple options designed for versatility. It has supportive options to help out your teammates. It's very good in specific situations. It can get one hit KOs. It sometimes lets you down and it's red in color. Hang on a sec. This weapon is the Monado. Let's do this. I'm clearly not the true heir to the Flingza roller, or really any roller, probably because I don't fucking play on Wi-Fi. But here's all the advice I have for you. Follow these and you'll be right as Ryan. If you've played the game for more than a week, then you'll know not to use the roller for rolling. Otherwise, I'd have to rate your performance as amateurish. The only time you should roll would be if you miss a flick and the opponent is right next to you or for super jump camping, but make sure you're still moving through their circle when they land and you can change their future. Even if you're not rolling, rollers are all about movement. Know exactly where your one hit KO range is and don't swing until they're within range. Using some main power up can help extend your one hit KO range too. If you memorize what this range looks like, then you only need one shot. Think of your enemy and the power to defeat them is yours. Things will really be heating up. Let them know you're gonna go all out. Also, although your ink covers a wide area, your damage is focused in the middle of the swing path aligned with the arrows, so make sure you're aiming at least a little bit, center your swing in your target, and nothing's gonna stop you! But even though this roller 
can get one-hit kills or something, it might be better just to think of it as a two-hit kill weapon that can sometimes get critical hits. Always plan on having a good rhythm going and using two attacks, and if it only takes one, then we win! Most of that stuff applies to the Uno. Next is when to use the Dose. And the Dose is unreliable for getting kills. Offense-wise, it really only shines when you're attacking someone who's on a platform above you. Slash them in the air with it. Use the Dose instead for movement around the map, since it leaves a long path to swim through. Use the Dose to get in close, then use the Uno to put on a show, I don't know. The Dose can also be good for painting the map and pressuring the other team if they're way outside your Uno range. If someone's coming at you and you just start dosing at them, they might run. They don't know that the Dose is bad and won't actually do anything, and if they get too close, then they will pay for their insolence. With this roller, you really gotta pull together with your teammates. Compared to the splat roller, this is more of a supportive roller, cause it struggles to get kills on its own, but don't worry, the future is our suicide. Staying calm and staying focused on objective might really be such a good idea. That being said, let's not lose our heads though, since some other classic roller strats still work with the flings at two. Waiting in plain sight until they get close, then hitting them with a quick uno still works and will grant you some happy happy time. Sneaking around and using stealth and slashing them in the back works too. The two flings of variants are, well if I were making these I wouldn't go with them, but it looks like we don't have a choice. The flings of roller is designed for mobility, which is why they gave it the stationary subweapon of splash wall? Well, splash walls can be used in particular key spots on the map when you have to protect everyone and save us from harm. They can also be used to interrupt people as long as you throw them out in advance. Bomb Launcher is good at painting and applying lots of pressure on the other team. This roller does best in splat zones, since you can use Bomb Rush to retake the zone real quick if you're about to lose, the future doesn't belong to them, and you can throw down a wall first and then use Bomb Rush for further protection. Since your only reliable long range option is Bomb Launcher every 20 seconds, this set is more of a supportive set. If the original Flingza is the Monado 1 Flingza, then the Foil Flingza is the upgrade of Monado 2 Flingza, as it's a more aggressive set and it will be time for the other team to witness your power. The combo of suction bombs and Tenom missiles are good long range options that are good at controlling space, which is what every single game mode in Splatoon is all about at its core, controlling space. I can really feel the power of this set. You throw a suction bomb one way, then launch Tenom missiles, then throw another suction bomb, and you'll have like multiple areas covered all at once. Even even if they don't get kills, you'll make the other team be still. They won't have as many approach options. Those are all the roller tips I have. Could someone else handle this one? What? I'm in a Captain Astronaut video? I really must be famous. No wait. Oh uh, wait. He asked Garbage Splatuber to talk about the garbage weapon. It's the Flingza Roller. The one that just really failed. Nintendo went for that Hannah Montana best of both worlds meme in a world where Old Town Road is still ancient history. Just like this game that we're still playing and talking about for some reason? If you're gonna play the Flingza Roller, I have a little suggestion for you. Don't! No! That's right! Don't do it! I have seen competitive people use the Garbin. I have seen competitive people use the Dymino. Have I seen competitive peeps on the Flingza? No! Used to that flashy quick moves of the roller? You're gonna fail at the timing of every vertical flick. Used to the backlining and the power? Every time you try to use the horizontal flick, you're gonna feel like an 80 year old in the gym. You got no power, you got no presence. Guess what? You got better options. Don't use the Flingza roller. It's bad, I'm bad, and I don't use it. If I use the Flingza roller, I lose even more. And I'm a loser, so don't use the Flingza roller. Thank you. For both Flingzas, main power up is not an option, it's a requirement. You need that power. If you want to have a chance of victory, then you need to use at least one main of it. Flingza can also be pretty ink hungry, so some ink saver main can be useful. Given that it's a roller, swimming movement abilities such as swim speed, ink resistance, and ninja squid can be good on it. With enough speed, you're more likely to be within kill range, and you will make the other team know pain and suffering. Remember that ninja squid slows you down, so you need to use at least 5 subs of swim speed to counteract the slowdown effects of Ninja Squid. Special Charge is good to rush them with Mo Bombs and rush them with Mo Missiles. Using the Flingza will put you in a world of strife where you'll be against the odds and you'll be dying a bunch, so either come back or last to 
each effort can help you choose to fight, and they'll buff you up so much you'll be ready to kill a god. Either one pairs well with quick respawn so you don't leave your party hanging for too long after you die and come back to life. And that's it. Thank you for watching and thank you to everyone on Twitter for your suggestions. I recommend reading through the thread for more suggestions and details and maybe even click the follow button while you're there. That's always an option. <coughs> and also thank you to a squidman for your flings of tips that I definitely listened to beforehand. Everyone go subscribe to him. I'm on his streams a bunch. He streams every week. Who has time for that? Apparently he does. And also subscribe to me too for future videos if you haven't already. It really does help a lot. Anyway, here's some clips. Run over there!